of Clifton Packaging in the UK. They've invested in West Africa, East Africa, and they're sweeping through the whole continent. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Mr. Z, the chairman of Clifton Packaging. He just told me we've got 20 minutes. I will try and be done in 12 minutes. The reason for that is the average person here can only last 12 minutes before touching his mobile phone. <laughs> so we need to understand that. This baby here is a game changer for all of us here and also in Africa. This is, this is a game changer, lies next to our bodies. The science tells us that it must be 15 millimeters away from our body. But we are glued to this all day, all night. How many of you here are mobile phonics? Who, who, who is suffering here from uh, mobile? Who's a mobile addict? How many mobile addicts we have here? <laughs> so, so we, have a, we have agreement at least on this one point, right? So today, our uh, little bit of discussion together as a team is going to be about the KIP. What is the KIP? Anybody tell me what the KIP is? We want to make this interactive. That is the KPI. KPI. We took the KPI and we converted it to the KIP, African style. Which is, knowledge is power. Right? So this is where we are going today, all of you here. For us to understand today, we must understand yesterday. When I say yesterday, I'm like talking only 500 years back, right? We need to understand the culture, the tradition, the tribalism, the colonialism. There's an ism after every word that I speak, right? Because we are governed by all these isms all over in our lives here and back in Africa as well. So once we come to terms and understand about yesterday, we can deal with today and we can make it better tomorrow. Yes. Right? Yes. Oh, that was difficult. <laughs> so here we are. Some years back, my brother older than me, we are four brothers, we are all addicted to this thing we have about Africa, the passion we have for it, right? My brother older than me, some 10 years ago, he started an initiative called Baba. Anybody here know about the Baba initiative? What, what does it mean? That was a few years back only. I'm going back 10 years ago. It meant, I asked this question in Nigeria in a conference of 2,000 people, and many people stood up and said, Baba, it means buy America, build America. <laughs> and I said to them, no, that's not what it means. It means buy Africa, build Africa. That's what it means. So when we are from Uganda, we are immigrants. All of us here are immigrants. We were immigrants in Uganda. We continue to be immigrants in UK. A lot of us here are maybe second, third, or fourth generation in this country, but we are still immigrants. So we're gonna carry that label till we die. So the power of immigrants must not be ever underestimated. You know, they threw us out from Uganda, they sent us to England, to a city called Leicester, and they told us, don't come to this city, we don't need you here. There's already too many here. And today, that city is practically run by the immigrants. That was in the 70s. Then in the 80s, the Malawi immigrants came. In the 90s, the Somali immigrants came. In the 2000s preceding that, the Eastern European immigrants came. So this year, whether you like it or not, in the cities are full of immigrants. Right now, the question is, wherever we are, whether we're in Africa or we're in England, an immigrant will always be an immigrant, right? Now the question to ask is, are they assets or liabilities, right? Who's going to answer that for me? Are the immigrants here, the Ghanaians, the Nigerians, the Ugandans, the diaspora here, are they assets or liabilities? Assets. Right. We agree, we're doing well today. Now, I'm going to ask a question here now. 
how are we, the diaspora, going to be assets to Africa? How we can do that is we are going to talk to you, ask you a question here. My brother there is the one who answers every question here. You need to inspire everybody here. MBE. What is MBE in England? Anybody know? Used to be a member of British Empire. Today, we're going to change that to micro business empowerment. Yes? That MBE is now changed to micro business empowerment. Now, what that is all about is this check for 10,000 pounds. What do we do with this? The diaspora here, their limitation, let's say, is 10 or 20,000 pounds, right? So in our network abilities, we need to now work together to see how we can take that 10 or 20,000 pound investment to Africa. Almost every country in Africa, you can go there and double your money. You put that money in the bank here, what percent will you get back on it? First of all, when you paid all the bills here, you're going to be lucky if you've got any left over to put in the bank. And when you put it in the bank, when your parking tickets comes, your cameras, your speed awareness course comes, all those added bills, the hidden taxes that come your way, you're not going to have these problems in Africa. So you take that 10 or 20,000 pounds and you learn by networking with a correct partner out there. May not be your brother, your sister. There are many, many good people you will meet there at that level. You empower them and they'll be making money for you. So the diaspora here have to learn how to do that. When we went to Africa, we made the mistake to look at big business, to say, let's do a big business, because we were inspired by, in Uganda we have Big industrialists called the Madwanis, the Meta family, they were making big, big bucks over there. So we were inspired to do something big, but very quickly we learned that we need to go down to the bottom of the ladder and to start creating micro businesses. Our intention is, do we need to go there to make money for me? No, because I'm making money here in England. So our intention was, that is our motherland, is Uganda. How many Ugandans here? They were here a minute ago, where have they gone? Going for another meeting. Well, okay. My brother Day was speaking about Ghana, and almost everybody wanted a Ghanaian passport, right? Yes. But Uganda is called the Pearl of Africa. The source of the Nile is not Ghana, it's Uganda. Yeah. Right? The River Nile, the source of it is in uh, my home town where I was born called Jinja. So the reason we call that our motherland is because our mother is buried there in Uganda, in Jinja. So that's why we call that our motherland. So we have an affinity to that where our next generations who have not even seen that country or been there, they are also very passionate about Uganda. So in Uganda, there are many, many industries. I can go through a list of 20 here, but today, those are projects which are starting at a million dollars, going up to 150, 500 million dollars in mining, in agriculture, in telecommunications. But those are not the projects that are going to inspire us today. All of us here today, we have to go the other way and look at the micro industries. So go on, anybody throw me a question here right now to tell me well, what, what kind of micro industry can I set up then I'm going to answer you back now. And just give you an idea of how much you can do there, what you can do there, right? This lady is looking at me. I'm okay with that. Go on, ask. Um, are we looking for flexibility in Rwanda? Anywhere in Africa. or a good agricultural project for value addition in Rwanda?
value addition. Now, when you talk about a country like Rwanda, which has come through the journey of a lot of strife in, in the recent years, in the 90s, we had a lot of problems in Rwanda. Today, you look at the greens of Rwanda, is probably one of the cleanest country in Africa. Is that correct? Yes. Yes? So, in Rwanda, they are very good with tea and they are very good with coffee. Now, when you try to do the added value chain for coffee, to bring it to the UK, there are hurdles. Because then now we are coming to a topic here which is called trade, not aid. When Africa keeps receiving aid, it becomes addicted to receiving aid and it forgets about the trade. So, going from the West to Africa, what we need is to understand each other that we need to do trade. So the obstacles upon us, she wants to pack coffee, micro, good packaging. She wants to send it to a supermarket in Sainsbury's or Tesco. These are the barriers to overcome because when you are send, sending coffee out, most of the coffee, as all of you will know, is in Costa. It leaves $300 a ton and it sells here for maybe, God knows, 40 thousand. It multiplies 40 times by the time you drink your coffee here. So every time when you drink coffee here, you think about that statistic, right? <laughs> that the coffee, just as one example. So the added value chain is what we are talking about here. That was just one example about Uganda. But overall, every country in Africa is rich in agri. In our country, in Uganda, we say that if you throw a seed in the morning, you wake up, something is growing. That is how fertile the soil is. And it's like that in Nigeria also, but we have a lot of obstacles here. So when you guys here have got 20,000 pounds to invest, we have to network together. Where's Martha? Where are you, Martha? I'm here. You take everybody's details down here. Martha, you're going to contact there, and Martha will network with the rest of us here. And we can see how to assist you in your respective country to convert that 20,000 or even 10,000 into money. Now, just I give you one short example, right? If you make a mini industrial estate and in Uganda the government is assisting to give you the land, on that land they like the idea of imposing mini factories, six stroke 12 factories, which are self contained with a generator, with a cesspit, with everything that you need to operate there. Now, what is required from this side is the support from companies like myself and other organizations to develop and help them to work up to speed to how we are accustomed to in the UK. That is where you are doing bilateral work, empowering them to empower themselves. So this all requires another acronym I'm going to put to you is it's called ATC. What it means, what does that mean? Do you know what it means? Go on, have a go. That's not bad. We <laughs> give you a clap for that. I like that. He's beaten me today. <laughs> right? The one I had in mind was adapt to change. We all have to adapt to change, all of us. And we can only do that if we sing together, we shake hands together. Now, you'll notice that we keep saying the word Africa because it's not Uganda, Nigeria, or Ghana. We now have to look at it as a continent called Africa and network with each other as Africans. That is the only way we are going to take on the world. But if we separate each other and we fall into the pit of tribalism, culturalism, nationalism, and all those isms that I mentioned earlier on, that will be our roadblock, right? Those governments in the whole of Africa, in, even in the world today, we ain't gonna have the power to change them. It's better that we, at the micro level, wake up and affect change ourselves. So this is where we are going to be realistic. To be realistic, to say that if we want Change, we have to make it happen ourselves, right? Otherwise, we're going to be in big trouble. So, after the ACT comes the TWA. Again, I'll keep picking on you, you good you are. 
TWA, what, what are we? Where are we with the TWA? TWA is... It means uh, Trade with Africa. He's my man. I've got <laughs> two here on my team today. Trade with Africa, that's the correct one. So we have to go down that road. Is that if we create these micro businesses, we will empower people, we'll create employment, and that is where we need to be, is to create that employment. And again, all of this ain't gonna happen without this baby here. This baby is your wife. This is your wife. W for WhatsApp, I for Instagram, F for Facebook, and the last one is E for email. Right? That's what this is. So if we use this effectively, we can affect change. I'm ready for any question from anybody right now. Bring it on. Oh, take it up. Yeah, you, you were asking a moment ago, and you were asking us to ask you about businesses that could work in Africa. And here in the UK, there are many, many, many small scale e commerce outfits, some who have come from small shops, and some who just started up online only. And I just wondered how feasible you saw that as being. I'm not talking about being the new Amazon, I'm talking about little independents doing e commerce in Africa. Very much in the infancy, when I worked in Nigeria, in Zambia, in South Africa, in uh, these countries, it is very much in the infancy where the lady said she'd invest some money to do that and then set up a delivery app. These things are in the infancy right now. So right now to tell you, well, that is possible, go and do it tomorrow, is not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen maybe the day after, right? So if you look at uh, micro businesses, you mainly <coughs> will start with agriculture sector because there's abundance of food rotting away because the inability to do the added value, to process it. That's where you are with it. Right. Um, I understand you work for a company called uh, Clifton Packaging. That's right, Clifton Packaging. Right. Um, first of June this year, it became illegal to take uh, um, uh, plastic uh, packaging to uh, Tanzania. So what are you doing about it? <laughs> there are now materials that have been developed which is recyclable packaging. That's uh, the way forward, is using materials which are compostable or recyclable. In the issue in Africa is there are not enough centers of technology which allows you to take that plastic to recycle it or to go down the compostable route. So right now, the prevention is the route everybody is following rather than the cure, but they don't really have an alternative to replace that. So all over Africa, the plastic bag is the one that is being attacked for the moment, but there are other food chain products which are not being attacked. The ones you are referring to are mainly the plastic bag, which is all over the world right now is taking a dip. So that's where, what the situation is with that. Rapid change happening here in England as well. Yes? I'll just answer that one now, but uh, we will be doing a Q&A collectively with all the panel, right? So we jumped the gun here a bit, but I'll answer that question before we close this topic. Is uh, when you start with a farmer who is producing the groundnuts, then you go through the added value chain with the, those groundnuts, and normally in Africa, they will just roast them, 
and we sell them in, uh, in very, very poor packaging. So the assistance available here with the network here collectively is to show you how to add flour on it and a flavor on it. This is further, every ingredient you add on that product is going to give you a better price and make it affordable to sell in the marketplace with the correct packaging. So that applies to every product that you will touch in Agri to add value to it. So my brothers, my sisters, thank you very much. We're going to continue with the Q&A afterwards and then we can ask more questions from my brothers as well. Let them do some work as well. Don't leave it all to me, right? Let's do it the African way is to share. That's what we do. When we make some garlic, we share it.